I've got one more uh, lesson on prayer. Everything starts from prayer. That is something that Mother Teresa lived by. And she wrote a little book, and I brought it. Let's see, where is it? Here's the book. Everything starts from prayer. And I had really never dealt with it very much, and I thought, I knew when I came back I was going to really look into this. And she has little meditations on different points about prayer. And I thought, ah, this would be just perfect. Now, you may be wondering, why am I talking about a devout Catholic in a unity church? <laughs> but this All woman happens. lived All prayer. Happens. What an example. She lived prayer. And she had a deep respect for all religions. Mm. She would say, you say a prayer for your religion or your faith, and I will say, I'd say a prayer as I know it. Together we will say the prayer, and it will be something beautiful for God. Wow. When asked if she had any advice for the American people, she said, you should pray more. Mm. <laughs> I think this, this woman just... You know, she at a moment's notice would just go into prayer, and we can we can do that too. But here's an interesting thing about Mother Teresa: Did you know that she actually struggled with severe doubt mm -hmm. to a sense and had a sense of inner distance from God? Her inner struggle is a blessing to us, as it undermines the myths about how spiritual people have to be perfect. You know, here she was just fully human and fully divine. What an example. She once wrote in a letter addressed, she addressed it to Jesus, I am told God loves me, and yet the reality of darkness and coldness and emptiness is so great that nothing touches my soul. Now, who would have known that that's what she was going through? This points to the myth that our own feelings are the exclusive or even the primary judge of whether our inner working is going well. Because how many of us, well, family members, we love them, but sometimes we don't like them. We have feelings about them. You know, the feelings don't... The feelings come up, we have to acknowledge them, they point to something, but they're not our truth. They're just the feelings. They're barometers of our outer experiences around maybe our inner struggles. So we've got to listen to them and, and again acknowledge, what is the truth? And that's where prayer comes in. And Mother Teresa's fidelity to her beloved God definitely trumped all of her feelings and all of her, it, it, the work that she did in the world. Well, faith and doubt are polarities. And you may remember I've done a little work with polarities. Um, and I think we started this in 2021. Well, faith and doubt are definitely two ends. But remember with the polarity, you travel it like that infinity loop. Mm -hmm. And then there is the middle way. And to me, the middle way is prayer. The third way is prayer. Because we don't always stay in one or the other. And we can, you know, there, there's negative sides to both. We can have blind faith, you know, and then, and then you know, doubt can be good. Maybe it's, it's good to question things and to ask. So this is something that we just, we, we live with in our both-end world. That shakiness is the part of the human experience. Oh, yes, definitely it's part of the human experience. Yeah. Well, prayer strengthens our faith in the face of the doubt. Do we get lost in pain and confusion and doubt, or do we accept it and gently work to transform it through our spiritual intention and prayer practice? It's that idea of transforming something. We can transform feelings, we can... There's so much we can do through that. We are fully human, of course, and fully divine. I keep saying that. That is, man, that's, that's just what it is. And like the father of the epileptic boy in the Gospel of Mark, you know, he begged Jesus, I believe, please help my unbelief. 
you know, so I have faith, but please help me in my doubt. Well, in her honesty, Mother Teresa wrote, if I ever become a saint, I will surely be one of darkness. I will continually be absent from heaven to light the light of those in darkness on earth. She would visit us on earth. And in fact, somebody asked her, are you a saint? And she threw a little finger and a little smile and a glint and said, no, you are. <laughs> so we all had that. She didn't, she never elevated herself as something special. She just merely elevated her consciousness. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. In her honesty. Um, so, this is a book of succinct meditations around six different headings. So I'm going to share with you some of the quotes. Now, okay, she is a devout Catholic. So, God is He. You know, there's the language is not necessarily our language, but we can, we can transform that too if we need to. So, the first heading was the need to pray. Okay. As she said, everything starts from prayer. Without asking God for love, we cannot possess love, and still less are we able to give it to others. Just as people today are speaking so much about the poor, but they do not know the poor, we too cannot talk so much of prayer and yet not know how to pray. So she was a woman of action. She, she, boy, she upheld that fifth principle in unity. She walked the walk. She just didn't talk about it. And, and you know, she lived with the poor in India. And um, she was just amazing. She said, love to be true has to begin with God and prayer. If we pray, we'll be able to love. And if we love, we will be able to serve. And, and I saw this theme, you know, pray, love, serve. Pray, love, serve. I even experienced that this week a little bit because I was called upon to serve. And, and it was hard, but I always, seriously, I did. I started from prayer, and from that just, well, of course, came the love. Of, and of course I'm going to do this. So pray, love, serve. And she added, whatever religion we are, we must pray together. Oh, man, that would make a better world. And this is important. Children need to learn to pray. And parents need to teach them. And it needs to be more than now let me down to sleep. But, you know, I got to thinking, are we teaching our children to pray? Now, I know there's controversy prayer in school. I'm not talking about that controversy. But just in our homes, are we teaching our children to pray? Are we really talking about it? You know, it just made me, made me think. Now, another heading is opening your heart. And we know in the five movements, that's just the beginning. You start from in the heart and open. So open your hearts to the love of God, which he will give you. He loves you with tenderness, and he will give you not to keep it, but to share. So she was always about, you know, you will be fulfilled. You, you will be filled up, and then you must give it. Giving and receiving are one. God dwells in us. That's what gives him a beautiful power. It doesn't matter where you are as long as you are clean of heart. And here's what she meant by that. Clean of heart means openness, the complete freedom, that detachment that allows you to love God without hindrance, without obstacles. And you ask, is my heart so clean that I can see the face of God and my brother, my sister, who is that black one, that white one, that naked one, that one suffering from leprosy, that dying one. Because she that is what she lived daily. And this is what we must pray for, the clean heart. She sets the bar kind of high there. <laughs> And silence was really important to her. And we know in unity, that's it. 
There is no life of prayer without the silence. Everything begins with prayer that is born in the silence of our hearts. Mm. We need to be alone with God. Take it to headquarters, Charles Fillmore said. Mm -hmm. We need to be alone with God in silence to be renewed and to be transformed. If we are careful of silence, it will be easy to pray. I like this part. There is so much talk, so much repetition, so much carrying on of tales in words and in writing. Our prayer life suffers so much because our hearts are not silent. So taking that rest in silence, we know that's really key with unity. She believed, let's pray like a little child. Start and end the day with prayer. Come to God as a child. If you find it hard to pray, you can say, Come Holy Spirit, guide me, protect me, clear out my mind so I can pray. Now, I thought, I was just thinking, maybe I should unitize this. Dave isn't here this morning. But Dave Allgaier, he would be saying, oh, those words, Jeannie, I'm not so sure about that one. <laughs> so, so this is for you, Dave. <laughs> now I lay me down to sleep. I release the day. I rest in my divinity. May it clear my mind. May it guide and keep me. That's just what I came up with as I sat there last night. Beautiful. So, yeah. That's what, that's what I think prayer is... I don't want to put a religion on it. Prayer is prayer. And God hears it all. Well, and this is what her point is. Yeah. We all, you know, it's so universal. Every religious tradition does it. But more than that, everyone seeks something. And, and I'm very fortunate because I have three, three, three <laughs> who's a grandmother. Yes. I have my, my daughter and son-in-law and I have my grandson. And then we're all three generations in one household. Yes. And several months ago, Logan, who is going to be eight, said something to me, and I looked at him and he said, what did you say? And he told me again, I, and I, I thought, I said, it took me 40 years to learn that. It was just so phenomenal what came out of his mouth. These children know this. We're born with it. And I just feel very fortunate because I have this these three generations within my family, and I and I work. And of course, I don't have work anymore. I mean, I just turned seventy nine, so I take care of him when they're not there. So it, it, everybody's working. Everybody's in my family is their children are healthy. I don't have great grandchildren. They should probably be great grand um, great grandchildren. But I had my children. When I was like, in my mid thirties and my daughter and, and that, so and you really understand person. pray like a child. That's yes. what I was going to say. Pray like a child. You yeah. see, words, like child. words that come out of his mouth sometimes just blow me yeah. away. I just think it's incredible. it's amazing. They can teach us a lot. Well, even even with my young new granddaughter, I can just tell that she trusts life, and if we can just bring her along with that, and then you know put words to it. That's yeah. going to be wonderful. So pray like a child. Um, the, well, the more you pray, the easier it becomes. And the easier it becomes, the more you pray. So it's just, it's just that cycle. And uh, she says, pray often during the day. Take the trouble to pray. Just take a moment. And I, and I found myself this week, I would just think of a, one of the 12 powers. Oh, I need strength. I am strength. You know, it can be so simple. And as you remember, and I've done this one often, Annie Lamott says, help, thanks, wow. I mean, prayer can be very simple. It's just taking the moment. Taking the moment. Well, there are fruits of prayer, of course. The fruit of silence is faith. The fruit of faith is prayer. The fruit of prayer is love. The fruit of love is service, and the fruit of service then is silence. 
the cycle. But there again, prayer, love, service, bookended by silence. Joy shows from the eyes. It appears when one speaks and walks. It cannot be kept closed inside us. It must react outside. When people find in your eyes that habitual happiness, they will understand that they are the beloved children of God and they see the happiness. So, in my older age here, and we, when we said this of my mother, we called her Twinkle because her eyes just twinkled and and when she smiled they were just little slits now i'm finding you know in all the pictures you don't see anything but slits <laughs> i mean my little eyes but i do you all feel the twinkle in your eye the twinkle you really feel it and i feel myself connecting i feel like there's a light coming from me and a light that i may be receiving you know and um you know, we can smile with our eyes for sure. And of course, our whole face will show it too. But I love that. They will understand that they are the beloved children of God. Smile. Pray more, smile more. <laughs> there is a tremendous strength that is growing in the world through continual sharing and praying together and suffering together and working together. Didn't you just feel like one of the things about COVID that wasn't so bad is that it was worldwide. And we were we were all connected in a way. We were all in it together. Mm -hmm. And I wish there could be more things that we could cooperate with and do. Loving must be as normal to us as living and breathing, day after day until our death. To understand this and practice it, we need much prayer. The kind that unites us with God and overflows continually upon others. So there again, there's that idea. We receive it and then it overflows. Wow. Living and breathing. That would be wonderful. So my wish in our community... And it's coming true. It is. We've got prayer on the website now. It's becoming very active. So I, my wish is that prayer can become something that just easily rolls out at any time of day for any of us, all of us. And I wish that we could become so comfortable with affirmative prayer that prayer for others is just an easy task to share. Uh, Linda Martellowitz had said, you know, a lot of people are very reluctant to sort of pray in public or to pray with others. And it's because they're not practiced at making truth statements. Because in our affirmative prayer, we don't beg and ask, but we make statements of truth about ourselves and about the 12 powers and so forth. And, um, you know, with, with any prayer request, we hold the intention for the realization of divine life expressing his wholeness we don't have to fix and we don't have to predict now i know that when i was learning nonviolent communication when we were sharing with empathy partners we were doing empathy um i thought i had to use the perfect words see this is kind of like prayer i thought i had to say it perfectly and guess their feelings and their needs perfectly and finally, I realized when I was working with Robert Gonzalez out in Portland in the LIFE program that all I had to do was listen and hold presence and be there. And once I realized, I said, wow, I was really making this way harder than it is. And I feel like that's the same thing with prayer. We make it, we can make it harder than it is. So, in prayer with another person, in a consciousness of oneness, there is no you and me. You extend this realized consciousness to the other person. You know truth for them at a time when they can't know the truth for themselves. And this is something that Linda Martellowitz always emphasizes. You are, they may be at their wit's end, at their bottom, but you are holding the truth for them so that you can tell them 
No, this is who, who you are. Hold on. I'm here. So we can speak these statements of truth that uplift and strengthen. So you may notice I've got a process going on, on up here. Mm-hmm. And we used to call out, Susan will remember this, Travis, so you, we used to call out during, right before prayer, names, things, whatever. And you didn't have to go into detail. You know, you just might, you might give a name or you might say my daughter, uh, my pet, whatever. We used to call out. So we're going to kind of bring that back a little bit today. And um, I'm going to make it make it easy. Don't don't worry. We're going to do a lot together, and then we'll uh, whatever you feel like doing, uh, I'll let you do. So I'm going to go through this process. It's a little bit more than the five uh, movements of prayer, but of course we start with opening, and then we make a statement about God. God is. And I'll come, I'm going to come back to the slides, but I just want you to see what, what we're going to be doing. And then we're going to be still for a moment, about a minute. And, and of course, if you're at home, as long as you want. And then we're going to state an intention. And, um, and this is very optional. And the way that Linda had it set up with, as you say, I am divine. My prayer intention is. But I, I was thinking about this last night, but if you want to just name a name or something, you know, a little two words, three words, whatever's on your mind that you want to put in prayer with our community here, you can just pop up and say out loud. I'm not going around. I'm not pointing at people. You know, it's just a pop-up thing, and I'll give everyone a chance that wants to say it out loud. But then you can also say it to yourself. Now, on the table, I think we, we have prayer request slips. So even if you just want it written and not said out loud, I'm, you know, I'm just getting started in this process. And then we say a statement of denial. And then we say a statement of affirmation. And again, you don't have to, you know, you can participate if you want. But what you do is you call on a divine power that fits. So like for me this week, in the situation that I was in, I was constantly calling on the power of strength and order. And, and I just said, um, I claim the divine power of strength and order. I am the divine power of strength and order. And this last part, we're really not going to go through, but... If we were like in a small prayer group, we we might go around and say, to practice living as this divine power, I will. And But you have your little prayer request slips if you want, and you can write down, well, what is something you're going to do? What action are you going to take? And then we close together in appreciation. So that's what we're going to do. Are there any questions? You under- now, again, it's totally up to you guys how much you participate. So, but you're going to lead us. I'm going to lead. Yes, I'm leading. So, we're going to start at the beginning. And I said you can say, we're going to speak together if you wish. Or just read it and say it to yourself. Now, as we get along with this, if we ever do this again, I might expect a little more, but this is today. (laughs) I'm going to give you a pass. All right, let us start. Let us just take a deep breath. Let's clear out. We say together, I breathe consciously, relaxing physical and mental tension. I turn my attention to the divine nature of this present moment. I relax and open to oneness. Let's take another breath. There is only, together, there is only one divine nature, infinite, immutable, 
inexhaustible. Everything and everyone derives its identity from one divine nature. Divine nature is my nature. I am divine. Still in silence. We're going to start with intention, intentions. I'm going to say, I am divine. My prayer intention is to have wholeness, to express wholeness, to have safe travels. Together, I release all mistaken judgments and untrue assumptions about myself, others, and my prayer intention. I deny false ideas any control over my consciousness. this on your own. I claim the divine power of strength and order and will. I am the divine power of strength and order and will. Together we say, in oneness, we bless, appreciate, and celebrate our divine nature. We uphold one another's intentions. We exude appreciation, for we are truly blessed. Amen. And James Twyman has a song for Mother Teresa's prayer. So let us just sit and enjoy that. Mm -hmm. 